Davos Steer from Croatia, welcome to the Media Box. Your report is about religious observation and the workplace. What is the problem as you see it? Well, actually what we want to do is to reinforce uh, the protection of freedom of religion and belief in the workplace. Uh, of course, it's a right that is enshrined in uh, our European convention. Uh, we live now in a plural society in Europe, most of the places, and sometimes there are conflicts. Uh, for example, when we have people that have to, or sometimes they seem to be forced to choose between their religion or their job position. So we want to uh, ensure that they are not put into that position, that they are not forced to choose between religion, their belief, or uh, the job position, that actually both things can live together. And uh, this is actually a contribution to a more plural society. Presumably there are some jobs that people with particular faiths cannot do. For instance, I imagine that it will be very difficult for uh, a Muslim to be involved with slaughtering pigs or, uh, or, a, or a Hindu to be involved with slaughtering cows. Yeah. So I mean, how do you overcome those sorts of cultural differences? Well, there is a mechanism that uh, has been used uh, outside Europe in the United States and Canada uh, it's called reasonable accommodation uh, we have that concept in Europe also but only for people with disabilities and uh, mainly is that uh, uh, if you are in a position in a, in, a, in a workplace where there are certain areas that according to your religion or belief uh, you are not supposed to do your employer as much as that is reasonable uh, will not force you to do this kind of uh, task, but other, you can be very useful in some other task in the same uh, enterprise. Uh, so uh, the, this reasonable accommodation tries to combine that people, as I said, can be uh, freely expressing their uh, religion, their belief, and again, not to be discriminated at the workplace. Uh, so to combine both things in a, in a plural society as we're living in in Europe. So presumably that would include being allowed to wear if necessary, religious symbols. Some, I mean, a Catholic person might wear a cross, for instance. Others might wear other emblems of their of their faith. There were some cases uh, before also the European courts, and indeed the ruling is that uh, these people should not be prohibited from using, for example, a cross. There was a, a famous case uh, uh, in one of the uh, air carriers in in Europe where an employee was uh, prohibited to use it. They made a complaint and. And, and the court said, no, you, you are allowed to use a cross, not as a way of uh, proselytism, uh, but actually as a way of indicating your identity. So everybody has the right to manifest its own, uh, his or her own identity. This must come as a, a big problem, for instance, in the medical profession, where some people may be completely opposed to abortion, for instance, and feel that they cannot advise or, or, or help in any way with that. You, how do you deal with something like that? Because that, those are very deeply held beliefs. Yeah. Repression certainly is not uh, the solution. So we are not uh, uh, supposed to uh, push out of job someone who, because of his belief, says we will not practice abortion. But actually, uh, they have the right uh, to objection of conscience. They still can work in a hospital, do some other very useful things for public health, but you will not force them to do something that is against uh, their own own identity. So uh, still we can live in a plural society where everybody can uh, feel comfortable with his or her own religious beliefs or non-religious beliefs uh, and at the same time not to be discriminated at the workplace. Now, well, Steer, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.